Hello students, how are you today? We've had several classes in mathematics, especially trigonometry. And today we'll be wrapping things up in trigonometry by talking about one practical aspect of trigonometry. And that will be what? Angles of elevation and depression. My name is Onokbite Andy, and today we'll be solving real practical questions in trigonometry. I will start by talking about angles of elevation and depression. Now, let's go straight to the board and see exactly what I'm talking about. Angles of elevation and depression are practically used in trigonometry. Now, let's say this is Mr. Andy right there, standing on a hilltop. And there is a horizontal line across his eyes. This horizontal line is called your normal horizontal line. Now, angles of elevation and depression are measured just above the horizontal line or below the horizontal line. Now, let's say Mr. Andy has a, a puppy, a little dog, just below the horizontal line. Because it's on the hill, he has to look downwards to see the puppy. It means while he's looking at the puppy, he has a line of sight. The angle between that line of sight and the horizontal line is called our angle of depression. Now you will notice carefully that the angle of depression is measured below the horizontal line. Now what if an aeroplane flies over um, the hilltop and Mr. Andy is still standing right there? Mr. Andy will have to look at the aeroplane just above the horizontal line. Now, the line of sight between the aeroplane and the horizontal line is an angular measurement called the angle of elevation. You can see there's a difference between angle of elevation and that of depression. And the entire difference simply says one is measured above the horizontal line and the other measured below the horizontal line. Now, in practice, we always form a triangle from these several lines, and it helps us to find our unknown angles or the sides of the angle. Now, assuming this very diagram, I intend to form triangles from it. I can just draw a straight line across, just like this. Good. Now, it is obvious that we have two right angle triangles. Let's assume we want to use only one, then it has to look like this. Two right angles together, and now we have just one. Mind you, a right angle is always very peculiar because it's the only triangle that has a name for all the three sides. And you know what it is? It has the opposite, the adjacent, and of course, the hypotenuse. Once we have a right angle triangle, there are two very simple rules that we can simply apply, which we learned in our last classes. Now, the first one being the Pythagoras rule. The Pythagoras rule simply says hypotenuse squared, which is the longest side of the triangle, equals to opposite squared plus the adjacent squared. The other very simple rule is your trigonometric ratio. The sine ratio sine theta, opposite of a hypotenuse, the cosine ratio, and of course, the tangent ratio. Now, this is what we do in trigonometry, and this is one of the ways to apply trigonometry. Okay, now let's come back to our definition of um, angles of elevation and angles of depression. Angles of elevation refers to the angle between the horizontal line and that of the line of sight, provided the angle is measured above the horizontal line. An angle of depression simply talks about the angle measured between the line of sight and the horizontal line, provided the angle is below the horizontal line. Yes, so much for explanations in angles of elevation and depression. Let's go back to the board and see what our friend John has to say about application of angles of elevation and depression. Now we have a question here that says, John is 1.2 meters tall. 
and it's about 10 meters away from a palm tree. If the angle of elevation of the top of the tree from John's eye is 45 degrees. Now the question says, what is the height of the tree? Okay, how will John measure the height of the tree using the angle of elevation and of course its distance? Now the first thing to do here, we have to impute the values given in the question into the picture we have right here on the screen. John's height is 1.2 meters. The distance between John and the tree is 10 meters. The angle of elevation of the top of the tree from John's eye is 4 to 5 degrees. And this is our diagram. So, what is the height of the tree? Now, to find the height of the tree, let's just transfer John's height to the side of the tree. We know John is 1.2 meters tall, so we can put our 1.2 meters right there. But there's still, we still have some more um, height unaccounted for. Let's just label it x, okay? Now that we have x as the unknown part, the height of the tree will now be John's height, which is 1.2 meters, plus the remaining height, which is x. So the height of the tree, 1.2 plus x. But how do we get the value of x again? Once again, we'll go back to our triangle. So quickly, let us attempt to form a triangle from these lines, okay? Now I am forming my triangle now. I will have to form a right angle triangle. Why am I forming a right angle triangle? So I will be to apply either my Pythagoras theorem or my trigonometric rule. So from what we have, 45 degrees, 10, and x. What relationship are we going to use? We can simply use tan 45 is equal to x over 10. If I cross multiply, I will have it as x equals to 10 times tan 45. From our last class, what's the value of tan 45? Tan 45, of course, we give us 1. So if we multiply 10 and 1, we have 10. So the remaining height of the tree is 10 meters. And John's height is 1.2 meters. What will be the height of the tree? Simply add both values together. 10 plus 1.2. And that will give us 11.2 meters. So we can round it up by saying, therefore, the height of the tree is 11.2 meters. Wow. That was a very simplified work by John there. John was able to measure the height of the tree using his knowledge of angles of elevation and depression. If the situation was different, if he was given the angle of elevation and the height of the tree, he could have as well measured the distance between himself and the tree. Angles of elevation and depression is one of the ways of applying trigonometry. And there are many other ways which we will talk about maybe in subsequent classes. All right. Thank you for joining me today once again. My name is Onukwite Andy. Do well to flip through our course content, answer the quizzes, and I'm ready to shock you with exciting class activities. See you in my next class. Bye.